God my Savior, God my healer, God my deliverer. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. Every praise, every word of worship, every praise, every praise. Sing hallelujah, glory hallelujah, it's your right. every prayer, every, every prayer, it's your right. God my Savior, God my healer, God my deliverer, yes he is. God my Savior, God my healer, God my deliverer, yes he is, yes he is, God my Savior, God, God my healer, God my deliverer, yes he is, yes he is. God my Savior, God my healer, God my deliverer, yes he is, 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 every pray, every pray, every word of worship. Every praise, every praise. Sing hallelujah. Glory hallelujah. Every praise, every praise. Is you our God. God my Savior. God my healer. God my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God, my Savior. God, my healer. God, my deliverer. The Lord. Yes, he is. The Lord is my shepherd. Yes, I shall is. not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou rod and thy staff comfort me. Thou prepareth a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with all. My cup runneth over. Surely, 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 goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord Forever. Say it again, surely, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
Anybody know that God is worthy to be praised? Even in the midst of our sorrow, God is worthy to be praised. And so we are here to celebrate. Let me say that again. We are here to celebrate the life of a good brother. We're here to celebrate, to celebrate the life of a good brother. So we're going to celebrate the life of Cecil Howard Sr. on this morning. We're going to follow the program as it is listed, and we're going to celebrate. I, I know hearts are heavy. I, I know eyes are filled with tears, but we're going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate what God is doing, what God has done, and what God can even do in the midst of this. We'll have a scripture reading by Reverend Joyce Craft followed by New Testament Scripture by Elder Johnny Jackson, followed by a prayer by Reverend Thomas Downing. Good morning. I'll be reading the Old Testament scripture from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. To everything there is a season, a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get, and a time to lose and a time to keep, and a time to cast away, a time to rend, and a time to sow, a time to keep silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Man, we thank and praise God today for being in a place we've never been before. I'm going to read to you 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, beginning at verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither do a corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall raise incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swollen up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where 
is thy victory. The stain of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? But, and it says again, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abound in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Good morning. Our Father, it's in Jesus' name that we come to you. We know that you're all powerful, and life and death are in your hands. But Lord, we are so happy today that we understand that it doesn't end in the box. We are so thankful that we know, dear Lord, that you defeated death and you got out of the grave. As the first born of many brethren, dear Lord, we thank you for our brother we thank you for his life and the life that he lived and the work that he has done and the work that you have done in his life. Dear Lord, we know that the Apostle Paul said that to live is Christ, but to die is gain. We don't understand these things because we haven't been there and done that yet. But I'm sure he's up there cutting the jig now, saying, Lord, what took you so long? But Lord, we pray that you, we pray not for him, but we pray for those under the sound of our voice. Dear Lord, that you bring to our minds and our hearts the severity of life and the afterlife. We pray that you bless us, bless these, your people. Help us that we might be those people that you're calling us to be. We ask these things in Jesus' name and the Lord's people said, amen. For the rest of my life, I serve him. For the rest of my life, I trust him. For the rest of my life, I serve him. For the rest of my life, I trust him. Because God's been good to me. Yeah, hey. My life. For the rest of my life, I serve him. I serve him. For the rest of my life, I trust him. For the rest of my life, I serve him. For the rest of my life, I 
trust him, because he's been so good to me. Hey, hey. Time. For the rest of my life, I serve him. For the rest of my life, I trust him. For the rest of my life, I serve him. For the rest of my life, I trust him. Cause he's been so good to me. Yeah, hey. Come on, y'all. I serve the Lord. I serve the Lord. I serve the Lord. I'm going to serve the Lord. I don't know about you. I can't speak for you. But I'm going to serve the Lord. It's been so good to me. Because it's been so good to me. For the rest of my life. I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to serve the Lord. I got one more question. One more question for you. Are you going to serve the Lord? Are you going to serve the Lord? I can't speak for you. I'm just talking about me. But I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to serve the Lord. For the rest of my life, I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to serve the Lord. Did so good to me. Hey, hey. For the rest of my life, I'll serve the Lord. We now will have remarks uh, from uh, Brother Charles Dorsey and followed by uh, Sister Carolyn Satcher. Um, and then we will have reflections from family and friends. Minister Lowe, can you give me some in C? If there's anything in C. If you hear that, it's time to move to a close. Some in F. You hear that? It is finished. Amen? Amen. Amen. Words don't have to be long to be eternal. Amen. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Brother Charles Dorsey, and uh, I'm a member of Ursia Ministry Number One. Brother Havel was also a member of Ministry Number One. Now, Brother Howell was in Ursia before I was, so you know, and uh, he taught me a few things and. Uh, you know, he got where he couldn't stand, but yet he still participated in the meetings and all the other things that Ursher does. And he paid his tithes, too. One thing about it, Brother Howard, you tell him something, he'll do it. He may not do it the way you want him, but he'll do it. I remember one night, Brother Howard called me. Said, Brother Dorsey. Yeah. Well, we're supposed to wear Sunday. I said, well, we're going to wear our, our black suits, black tie. Okay. <laughs> that Saturday, Brother Howard showed up. He had on a brown suit and a green shirt. <laughs> I said, so I said, I, I, after, after the brother, I said, Brother Howard, what happened? Man, that's what you told me to wear. I said, no, I didn't. Yes, you did. What you got, all town? <laughs> hey, he had me 
checking with my wife. I said, do I act like I got Alzheimer? She said, uh, I don't know. She said, you act weird sometimes, but uh, we don't know what it is. But anyway, like I say, you know, he may not, whoa, what you told him where, but he would be there. He was very faithful to the Usher ministry. And uh, we will miss Brother Howard. And we thank the Lord for Brother Howard. And we know that Brother Howard is in heaven. May not do everything God tells me to do right, but he's going to do it. <laughs> And uh, I just want to say to the family, you have our deepest sympathy from Urshie Ministry Number One and our church, Mount Welcome Missionary Baptist Church, and our pastor. And may Lord, may the good Lord continue to bless the family with love, peace, and happiness. And thank you. Gospel music lovers. Right. Cecil and I and Sister Bussy, I don't see her up there, but Sister Annette Bussy, we used to end up at Free For All Baptist Church mm. down there on Candler Road listening to gospel music. Right. And one of our favorite gospel musicians were the Jackson Southern Abs uh -huh. with Frank Williams and Huey. Every time he heard about a gospel concert, he'll tell me, Calla, so Satya, Free Fall got a gospel concert, just like my buddy Homer. We miss him too. Just like Paul, as Brother Dorsey said, Cecil had a thorn in his flesh, but he didn't let anything stop him from coming to church. I always like to look up people's name with someone that has passed. And I found a lot of Cecil's, and I fixed it in my way. Cecil Howard was not the comedian and actor Cecil Calloway, but Cecil could make you laugh with some of those things he would say. Cecil Howard was not Cecil Ray Price, the murderer who killed the civil rights young adults, Cheney Goodman and Sherman. But he was one who said, thou should not kill. Yes. Cecil Howard was not Cecil Gordon, the famous race car driver. But he was one who would drive a friend to God's house to worship them in a timely manner. Now, we know he brought this young lady to church practically every Sunday. That's a disciple of Christ. Yes. Cecil Howard was not a pastor like Cecil Williams, but he was willing to listen to a pastor's sermon because he believed what the Bible says. How can they hear without a preacher? Right. Cecil Howard was not Cecil Womack, the rhythm and blues singer and brother of Bobby Womack, but I'm sure in his younger days that Cecil enjoyed some of that rhythm and blues music like us. Right. Cecil Howard was not Cecil B. Day, the founder of Days Inn Hotels, but he made it possible for his family to have a roof over their head. Cecil Howard was not the famous psychologist, Cecil Alec Mace, but was one whom, when you talked to him, he would help to comfort you in your troubled times. Cecil Howard was not the director and I know we all know him, Cecil B. DeMille, who made the Ten Commandments, but I'm sure Cecil was right there in front of that TV every year looking at the Ten Commandments. Right. Cecil, my friend, I love you and I will miss you coming in that door. May God bless you and your family. Thank you.
Good afternoon. Uh, my brothers and sisters, I want you to know it, it shouldn't be too much to be said. Uh, Sister Callan pretty much said it all. But I want you to know for the last five years, maybe you wonder where Mr. Cecil was early on the Sunday morning about 10 o'clock. Or late in the afternoon by one during the afternoon. But I want you to know that I'm the pastor of Great Beginning. I want you to know five years ago, Mr. Cecil stopped by for a little while. He and his wife and I began to preach and we began to preach. So he started coming to Sunday school. Not only that, he started coming to church. And then he began to see eye to eye like I saw eye to eye in the Bible. We began to itemize and put compromise and put it all together. Then we, see, we began to see that there's another life on the other side of this life. Ain't the Lord all right? But I stopped by to tell you all today that Mr. Cecil was a very faithful man in church. Are you with me? <clears throat> I feel that he believed in being saved and sanctified. And, and there's a story in the Bible where they, they, begin to, they, they begin to tell Jesus that if he hadn't have been there, that my daughter wouldn't have died. Jesus began to tell them that this part of life ain't death. He's sleep. For in the day of resurrection that we'll see one another again. Ain't God all right? But I stopped by to tell y'all today that Mr. Caesar's not dead. He just sleep. But I feel that he's done his part. And I begin to feel that he had ran a race and now he's passing the baton. And now the baton is on you. Thank you for letting me speak. Choir sung my song, what I told the Lord not long ago. For the rest of my life, I'll serve him. I don't know how long it'll be or when it'll be, but the rest of my life, I made up in my mind I'm going to serve him. Amen. And I advise you to do the same thing. Amen. Amen. Because we are leaving here. We didn't come here to stay. But I got up to say a few words concerning my brother-in-law. Amen. He was a good man. He employed lots of people in his days. Amen. You know, uh, he was a brick mason. And I never shall forget, after I left California, I came to Georgia. Came through, rather. And we had to ship my car to Germany. So we shipped the car to Germany, and I went to Cecil. I say, Cecil, I need to make a little money before I go to join my wife over in Germany. Cecil said, well, you know, I don't really want to hire no family, folks. <laughs> <laughs> and he told me why. I say, well, Cecil, I tell you what. Let's do it this way. You let me come to work for you. And if I don't do the work satisfactory to you, then you don't pay me. Cecil got to thinking. He said, that sounds like a pretty good deal. So I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Do I never would have agreed on that. I went out there on that yard, children of God, and let me tell you, those blocks got heavy. The bricks got heavy. And uh, I was so tired when I got back to Maker. So I, got, I went to get up the next morning to go back to work. Believe it or not, I couldn't even get out of bed. <laughs> my mama said, are you going to work or not? I said, mama, my word is out. I got to go. I want you to know I couldn't get up. So I simply rolled out of bed. Some of y'all know about that. I rolled out of bed and got up. Pray to the good Lord. I say, Lord, give me the strength because my word is out. And I want you to know I finished out my term that I, we had agreed on, and payday came. <laughs> Amen. I said, well, Cecil, how did I do? Well, Cecil said, well, Johnny, you know, if everybody else would like you, come and do what they're supposed to do, I wouldn't have no problem. I said, well, I can only be me. 
I got my money, so glad. <laughs> and I went on to Germany, amen? <laughs> so I thank God for my brother-in-law. I'm going to miss him just like you would miss him. Yeah. But praise the Lord, he fought a good fight. Yeah. And he kept the faith, yeah. amen? And we know that there's a crown waiting on him one day, amen? Y'all pray for me. Good afternoon, church. My name is Leisha Jenkins Henry, and I am a very proud, very proud, and happy alumnus of the greatest university in the state of Alabama. Right. That would be Troy University. I stand before you today to bring official greetings of condolence and sympathy to our esteemed alumni, Gayla Howard, yeah. daughter of Brother Cecil Howard. Yeah. I never met. Gayla's father, who we're here to celebrate today. But I did notice in the program, I think it's the centerfold picture, that he's a bowler. He was a bowler. I am a bowler. I've been bowling since I was about 10 years old. So that means I've been bowling over 50 years. I know what you have to be to be a bowler. You have to be tenacious, have to be steadfast, have to be dedicated. I can say that having seen his photo as a bowler, Bowler, knowing those things are instilled in him, I believe he may have passed those on to Gala, because that's what we saw in Gala at Troy University. And when I tell you to the Howard family, Mount Welcome Church family, friends and visitors, we love this lady right here, Gala Howard. And the things that we saw in her that we love about her to this day she had to have gotten something from Brother Howard. So that we are grateful for. So again, I bring you official greetings of sympathy and condolences from the Troy University National Alumni Association to our esteemed alumni, Gayla Howard. Thank you so much for listening to our words. Yeah. Deacon Grant will be the last, so him. Yeah. I want to say, uh, you know, I'm six men of my life, all my life. I, I, I've been in here, I've been taking care of him, and, you know, he's been a good person. Yeah. And he showed me, like the man said, all of the brick work, he taught me everything I know about being out in the streets and being a man. He raised me, gave me, you know, opportunity to show myself to, uh, to be some. So, you know, right now I just want to say I'm going to see someone miss you. You know, I know even though your birthday is July the 6th, you know what I'm saying, 7, 6, 36, but we're going to still celebrate. I love you, Uncle Cecil. Amen. And that's one for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Spirit. I come in honor and reference to Reverend uh, Robertson, Reverend Downs, and all the other ministers of the gospel. I come standing before you, Deacon Anthony Grant, Town Creek Missionary, Number One Baptist Church, Landonville, Alabama. I come to I come to define the name Cecil, the man that was in my life 48 years. And like you said about the bricks getting heavier, the blocks, yeah. and he didn't want a high family. And I mean, remember when I went to work, came back, came home, told my auntie, I don't know that boy there. I'm, I'm going to let him go. And she said, why? Because every time I said something, he asked me, slow down. Explain it. So I can understand. I can't keep going through it and everything every time he do something. But I'm going to explain to you in what the Lord put in the word 
Cecil, the name Cecil. That first C in Cecil, Matthews 5 and 4. Blessed are those who mourn, for they be comforted. God comfort is sure and gentle and meets all the desperate need, and it is available to all who come to him. The E in Cecil is endurance. Second Thessalonians, may the Lord direct your heart into God's love and Christ's presence. The secret to endurance is trusting God with your future and obeying him day by day. That is something that my uncle did. Trust and believe. That second C in Cecil was courage. In John 16, 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I overcome the world. God promised to give you all the courage and strength you needed to live for him. And my uncle had all the courage, presence, strength to live for Jesus. Even when he got sick and he couldn't come, he would go up the street to that man's church. My uncle would find the TV. He had the courage and the strength to continue even though health wasn't there. And he never let that stop them from trying to get in that truck to go to somebody. House of God. I. I use the I in Cecil for heaven. Where my uncle will be gone. And it says John 14, 2 and 3. My father's house has many rooms. If they were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that ye also may be. You can now look forward to going home to live today knowing that those who are forgiven in Christ will forever be with God. And I know my uncle is with God because he have always been, and like God said, get your house in order because he goes to have a place for us. That where he goes, we may be there also. And the way to be there is to give God your heart, your soul, and your understanding. And finishing the L in Cecil is love. And that's Romans 8, 3, and 5. In the time of, uh, excuse me, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or feminine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword. In the time of pain and heartache, God uh, enveloped us in his love. Rest secure in knowing that nothing can separate you from God's love. Nothing can separate you from God's love. And my uncle, like I said before, through all things that he went through, you could never separate him from God's love. And just being an honor and a blessing to be here, this is the home church that I got baptized in, Reverend Charles Grant, my uncle. And every time I come home, I have to come here, glad seeing some of the deacons and all that. We go way back. But I say this in ending. Cecil Howard, we all love and we're going to miss you without a doubt. But like Obama leaving the White House, Cecil Grant is checking out. All right. Good afternoon. I'm John Whitaker, and I'm a member of this church. And I don't have much to say, but I wouldn't let this time pass because Cecil was like family. I met him over 40 years ago. And when he came here, he came here working. This building was not always a gable roof, but a flat roof. And when we had a leak in this building, we called Cecil. Mm -hmm. And Cecil always acts about family. He's a very family orientated. And also, when I leave this place every day, anytime I leave here, the sign posts out there and the mailbox out there, I see Cecil. Amen. <laughs> By and by, 
when the morning comes when all the saints of God together in home we will tell the story how we overcome but we will understand it better by and by try your sock on every hand and we cannot understand all the ways that God will lead us to that blessed promised land where he will guide us with his eyes and we'll follow till we die but we will understand it better by and by oh Lord, when the morning, oh, we know the saints of God, we will tell the story we have, and we are locked up, and it better. By and by, we are often tossed and driven on this restless seat of time. Some of us got a cloudy tempted, often see a bright sunshine in the land a perfect day when the mist have rolled away. But we will understand it better. By, oh, 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 by, Lord, when, oh, we know the same of God, we will tell the story, Lord, I will, and we'll understand it better. Lord, when the morning comes, oh, we know the saints of God, we will tell the story, Lord, high, and we'll understand, oh, 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 I say back. We'll go back. Lord, and that door over there is a medicine cabinet on the left. Oh, we know the here saints of God. We will tell the story. Yes, we will. I will overcome. And we'll understand it better by and by. Amen. Amen. I only have a minute, 60 seconds in it. Forced upon me, can't refuse it, didn't seek it, didn't choose it, but it's up to me to use it. I'm going to suffer if I lose it, give account if I abuse it. Just a tiny little minute but eternity is wrapped up in it. Um, these words are words that were made famous by Benjamin E. Mays at the funeral of that great man, Dr. Martin Luther King. I repeat these words because the reality is we all 
We all just have a minute. We have a minute. And how we use that minute is truly, truly important. And I truly believe that Cecil used his minute to the best of his ability. He used it as well as he could. And so we're here to rejoice in the fact that he used his minute and every second wisely. I want to lift up a text, lift up a text, and it, it, it is a text that probably is not familiar to a homegoing service, but I think we can find something in that text. Luke 9, Luke 9, in that third verse, only one, a simple verse. It reads, he said to them, take nothing for your journey, no staff, no bag, no bread, nor money, not even an extra tunic. Today we come to celebrate the life of a good brother, Brother Cecil Howard. A brother, a husband, a father, a grandfather, a friend, an uncle, an usher, a brick mason, and a co-laborer in the Lord's house. As I reflected on what to say this morning, the word expedition stayed at the front of my mind. I consulted the ancestors and asked Brother Howard, what would you have me to say to your loved ones? See, I, I, I believe, I believe, if you've never heard me speak, particularly at a homegoing service is that I don't ascribe to this Western notion that death is the end and then um, there is no communication with our ancestors. See, Paul, Paul talks about joining that great cloud of witnesses. Paul, Paul speaks of, uh, of being, uh, of seeing those who had gone before. In the Bible, throughout the Bible, the, the Bible always refers to the ancestors of those. Even Jesus went uh, to the mountaintop and he talked to the ancestors. So I, I talked to Brother Howard uh, and, and Brother Howard told me to tell his family that he loves them too much to leave them, and that he will never leave them. He's just a shout away. I asked Brother Howard, what, what does uh, that have to do with uh, the word that I need to bring this morning? That, that word that is stuck in my head, expedition. And, and, and all I could think of is that little expedition he used to drive up here to church on every Sunday or if he was at the church. I, I, if I looked in the cameras and I saw that expedition, I, I knew Brother Howard was here. I, 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 he, he would pull that expedition in and, 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 and pull it in, and he wouldn't park it perfectly, help me somebody. Every once in a while, we would have to tell him to scoot up a, a little bit, but, but he made his way here. Regardless, help me. Okay, help. Oh, okay. He, 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 he didn't worry about anything along the way. He, if Brother Howard used that expedition the best he could. Uh, and and, and then, 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 then I was reminded that the journey is not yours. So, so if I can, I'm, I'm just going to tag this text, the journey is not yours. See, see, when you look at the definition of expedition, it is the journey of a group. It is the journey that a group takes. And so I truly believe that Brother Howell wants us to know that the journey is not yours, it's the Lord's. Brother Howard told me to tell you that on this journey, on this journey, you are laying bricks for the kingdom of God. Oh, well, well, walk with me, if you will. How, how, how Brother Howard, Brother Howard told me to tell you, you know, when, when you land these bricks, you, you, you need to remember a couple things. You, you, you need to make sure that you lay your bricks on a level foundation. 
wait, wait. Uh, I, I, I said, wait, wait. What, what do you mean lay it on a level foundation? I, I, well, bro, Brother Howard told me that anytime you are laying bricks, the, uh, the foundation has to be level or there is going to be some sliding of some bricks. Uh, and, and so whatever you do in this life, when you are laying bricks for the Lord, you got to lay them on a level foundation. But he also told me to tell you, he, he told me to tell you to make sure, to make sure you use pr the proper ratios in your life. He said, wait, when you're mixing the cement to lay the bricks, if you put too much water, it ain't going to work right. If you put too much sand, it, it ain't going to work right. Help, help me. Okay, y'all, 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 y'all not understand. He said, in this life, you got to make sure you got some spirit in it. And you got to make sure you got the right amount of spirit in your life. You, you got to make sure you got the right amount of service in your life. You got to make sure you got the right amount of love in your life. You, you got to make sure you got the right amount of purpose in your life. But he also tell me, told me to tell you to make room for the curing process. If you move something too soon before it's cured, it's easy to come loose. Walk with me, walk with me, if you will. In this life, when you're hurting, every once in a while, you got to make room for the curing process. In the midst of your loss right now, you got to make room for the curing process. Uh, you, you can't move too quickly and move too fast. You got to make room for the curing process. And I know, I know, I know somebody, somebody is exegeting the text. And wondering, what does this have to do with the word that I just spoke? Help me, somebody. Oh, okay, I know some biblical scholar is looking at me and wondering, well, how, how, how did you move from bricks to uh, going on a journey? Well, well, let, let, let me help you. In, in the text, in the text, Jesus prepares the disciples to go out on a journey. And, and he gives them some simple instructions as they prepare to move on and through and about. He, he, he's telling them to go out. The, the disciples have been rolling with Jesus for some, for some time now, and they have only been his sidekicks. They've never really done anything on their own, but now Jesus is preparing them for a journey. Jesus is uh, setting them up to go out and help them to learn something about themselves. I, I believe it. I believe that I was pointing to this text because Jesus is reminding the disciples that the journey is not theirs. That, that, that the journey is not theirs, that, that this thing called life is not all about us. Jesus is telling them to go out and preach the gospel and to heal. He's telling them uh, to leave everything else behind and, and to focus on what God has called us to do. It, 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 the, the journey is the Lord's. I, I believe Brother Howard would want those whom he loved to know that the journey is not yours. It's the Lord. I, I truly believe that's one of the reasons that Brother Howard tried to make it to church every Sunday. That, that's one of the reasons Brother Howard tried to serve any, any way he could in the house of the Lord, because he understood that the journey is not yours. It's the Lord's. And, and, and then as I move on through, and as we move on through this journey, there, there are some things that you need to remember as you move through this journey. I, I asked Brother Howard, what? What is it that you need to know as you move through the journey? Brother, Brother Howard would say, I, I talked to the ancestors, and the ancestors told me uh, to, tell the, to tell those whom I've left behind that there are some things that they need to do as they move through the journey. Uh, uh, can, can I give you just a few things uh, before I take my seat? Uh, uh, the first thing is, one, one, you, you got to go where God sends you. In that expedition... Brother Howard would jump in and go to somebody's house of the Lord whenever he could. Wait, wait, let me, let me, let me say this. Let me, uh, brother, brother Howard, uh, before uh, the, the, the month that he wound up having a stroke, uh, uh, Brother Howard was in the house of the Lord. Brother Howard, Brother Howard, I, I, I went to see him uh, just days before he transitioned. And, and, and Brother Howard, Brother Howard, uh, I went to see him, and, and he reminded me as I was walking out that, uh, Reverend Robinson, uh, uh, you said you were going to bring me some communion. 
And, 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 and so he, he, he understood the importance of going where God sends you. Uh, see, Jesus tells the disciples, Jesus tells the disciples to go. He sends them forth. Uh, the problem is, too many of us, we don't want to go where God sends us. I, I know there were times Brother Howard didn't want to get in his expedition and come to church, but he went where God sent him. Uh, I, I know there were times he probably didn't want to usher, uh, but he went where God, uh, uh, where God sent him. Then, 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 I, I truly believe, I truly believe that, that on, on this journey, on this journey, you, you got to go where God sends you, but also you got to go with nothing. I'm reminded of Job, that first chapter, after Job has lost everything. Job proclaims, naked I came into this world, and naked I shall depart. Uh, uh, Job, Job had lost everything. Je Jesus tells the disciples to go with nothing to remind them that God provides. Wait, wait, I, I, I truly believe, I, I, I truly believe that in, in the midst of it, if a funeral tells us nothing. If it tells us nothing, what it tell, what, what, if, it, if the one thing a funeral does tell us is that everything we have, Ain't got nothing to do with nothing. Well, okay, yeah. Let me. All right, uh, let, let, wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay. Let, 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 let me help you. Let me help you. Let me help you. That expedition ain't going nowhere with Cecil. Help me, somebody. Okay. Let, let me. The only reason Cecil got on clothes right now is because we would feel uncomfortable with him without clothes. Help, y'all, y'all. Uh, wait, 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 I, I, I think, I, I think, I think Jesus is trying to tell the disciples, look, look, uh, uh, when, when it comes to serving God, you don't need nothing. Uh, all you need to do is go where I send you. And in the midst of it, in the midst of it, in the midst of it, at, at every funeral, I, I've never, I, I've been, I, I, I've probably done almost 70 funerals since I've been pastor here. And not once has a U-Haul followed us to the cemetery. Not, 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 not once has, have I seen a, a casket filled with all of the things that the person held so dear. Uh, and, and, and so, wait, wait, go with nothing. Uh, on this journey, go, go, go with nothing. Don't worry about what you don't have. Don't worry about what you want to get. Just go with nothing. Go, go, go where God sends you. Go, go with nothing. But also, give what you have. In the text, in the text, Jesus tells the disciples to give others the gospel the good news, and to heal them. No, if you read that first and second verse, Jesus in so many ways anoints or empowers the disciples with the ability to preach and to heal. Jesus gives them exactly what they need. Okay, y'all, y'all, y'all not. All right. So, uh, 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 in the midst of this life, I, I truly believe that Cecil gave what he had. And, and, and when you look at it, if there was, when we had a flat roof, they called Cecil because he knew something about roofs. When, when they decided to build a mailbox, they called Cecil to give what he had. When, when they decided to put up a sign, they called Cecil. Cecil gave what he had. The problem is too many of us, too many of us, we, 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 we stingy. We don't want to give to God what we have. We, we don't want, and, and, and Jesus tells them to take nothing. Jesus says, wait, I don't want anybody to think that you, this came out of your pocket. I, I want you to go by yourself and, and, and understand that the gifts that I poured into you, are sufficient. But then, what I've come to realize is you, you got to give 
what you have. You, you got to go with nothing. You got to go where God sends you. But also, the text tells us, you got to show some grace. If you keep reading, keep reading. Jesus tells them to go. Tells them to heal. Tells them to preach. Tells them you're going to run into some people that's going to like you and some folk that ain't going to like you. Jesus says, wait, if, if Jesus was in this day and age, he would just say, brush your shoulder off. Uh, uh, but, but, but in that day, he just says, uh, kick your sandals off. Kick the dust off your feet. Je- Jesus reminds them that when people don't agree with you, when people don't like you, when people don't listen to you, when people don't want to do what you say, when people uh, mistreat you, you got to show them some grace. I, I, I truly believe that, that brother, brother Howard would want each and every one of us to show some grace because, the, because of the grace that God showed him. Uh, uh, brother Howard would want us to show some grace uh, because he understood that in grace is where we meet God. And, and when we show grace to others, we, we meet God in those moments. When we show grace, we meet God in those places. I, I'm, I'm about to... Uh, get out your way, but just in case you missed what I was saying, maybe you just didn't pick up what I was putting down, I I want you to understand, I I want you to know, I, I, I need someone to understand this afternoon that the journey is not yours. The journey is the Lord's. In this life, the, the most important thing that we can do is go where God sends us uh, because at the end of this life, we go with nothing. And all that we can do is give account for the works that we have done, that we have performed, and the grace that has been shown us. I, I, I stopped by to remind somebody on uh, this, uh, this afternoon that the journey is not yours. It's the Lord. And, and if, 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 if you don't realize it, uh, you, you need to understand and look at the life of Brother Howard. Uh, the Brother Howard, he, he jumped in his expedition because he understood that the journey is not his. It, it's the Lord's. And, and so he made his way to this church every Sunday that he could, uh, whenever he could, when his health permitted, if he had enough strength to get out of his bed and he figured he could make it to this place. He made his way here. He, he understood that the journey is not his. Uh, the journey is not his. It's the Lord. And so every Every day of his life, he was going to serve the Lord the best he could. He, every morning he woke up, he was going to serve the Lord the best he could. Every night when he went to bed, he was going to thank the Lord for allowing him to see another day. So I just stopped by to remind somebody that the journey, the journey is not yours. And, and, and I leave you, I leave you, I leave you with this. There was a father and a son. They were working on their car. And they were fixing the car. The father was up under the car in the garage. And as he was working on the car, his other son came in to the house. The son who was helping him fix the car said, Daddy, your son is in the house. And he's milling around. He kept on working. Son who was helping him fix the car said, Daddy, your son is in there looking around near your wallet. Father kept on going. He said, Daddy, Daddy, your son is in there and it looks like he's rummaging through your wallet. The daddy kept on working. And, 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 and he said, Dad, Daddy, Daddy, your son just picked up your wallet and he pulled a white envelope out. The Daddy kept on working. He said, Daddy, Daddy, wasn't that your paycheck? And the father calmly slid from under the car and he said to his son, Son, I got re- direct deposit." So whatever he got, don't really matter. Okay, you, you missed it. You, you, you missed it. You missed it. 
Satan thought he had Cecil. But don't you know his soul was on direct deposit? And, and so Satan thought he won back in November. But he didn't realize Cecil had direct deposit. So I know your hearts may be heavy. I, I, I know you may be a little bit sad. But don't you know that Cecil has direct deposit? And, and now you have a great ancestor. Uh, that is petitioning for you, that is pleading for you, that is hoping that you get all that God wants you to have. And so when you get sad, when, when your heart gets a little heavy, you, you need to say, uh, uh, Daddy, I, I just need you to go petition to Jesus for me. Uncle, I just need you to go talk to Jesus. Granddaddy, I just need you to go uh, talk to the Lord for me. And now you have somebody that is speaking up for you. And we just thank God for Brother Cecil and all that he's done. Amen, amen, amen and amen. Now we'll have acknowledgments. From Changing hand, hold to its hand. God's unchanging hand, just be your hopes on things eternal. And oh, hold to God's unchanging hand. Everybody ought to hold. God's unchanging hand. Oh, 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 to God's unchanging hand. Just be your something eternal. Oh, to God's unchanging hand. Can we put our hands together and celebrate the labor, the love, and the legacy of Mr. Cecil Howard? Amen. 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 First, giving honor to God, who is the source of my strength and the strength of my life, to the eulogies of the yard, Pastor Robinson, to all other ministers of the gospel, and to our choir and musician, this family says thank you. To the many friends and well-wishers gathered on today to celebrate his labor, his love, and his legacy, this family would have us to say thank you. Thank you for your cards, your calls, your floral tributes, your presence here today, but most importantly, your prayers. For we've come to find out and know it's the prayers of the righteous that availeth much. Amen. Amen. And to this beautiful family, on behalf of our senior director, Mr. Willie A. Watkins, and the entire Willie A. Watkins Funeral Home staff where the name is service, we thank you for entrusting your precious father into our care. And in doing so, we've prepared this memorial plaque for you to keep and cherish until you may one day see him again. Amen. The interment will follow at the Monta Vista Biblical Gardens. At this time, we'll ask if everyone would stand with the exception of the immediate family. Listed on the program to serve as pallbearers would meet us here on the left aisle, all the granddaughters. We need at least eight ladies to serve as flower ladies. If we could have those flower ladies to assemble here in the left aisle. Follow behind the flower ladies, we'll ask if there are eight gentlemen to serve as pallbearers to meet us here on the left aisle. Eight gentlemen to serve as pallbearers, eight flower ladies to meet us here 
in the left aisle. Everyone else, we ask that you remain where you are at this time. Thank you.